Hello everyone and welcome to this EdEc podcast on finding opportunity in crisis. The motivation to produce this podcast series comes from a very inspiring discussion I had with a small business owner just one day before the start of the confinement here in France. I was in Paris in a city which was starting to become increasingly empty and I was sitting also in an almost deserted restaurant. The staff was already busy wiping the tables with hydroalcoholic liquid and the business owner was looking increasingly gloomy. Uh, I got into a discussion with him and he said he was getting ready to close his restaurant for potentially a very long time. At the EdEx Chair for Foresight Innovation and Transformation we help companies to work with scenarios to navigate in uncertain business environments. So applying my frameworks in the conversation, I tried to make him see the light at the end of the tunnel. Despite the fact that I personally was having a hard time to see anything positive coming his way anytime soon. Uh, nevertheless, I tried to help him navigate his thoughts about how confinement might play out for him and his business and and what options he has and what imminent decisions he need to take. When leaving the restaurants 30 minutes later, I felt, however, that it was mostly me who has learned a lesson. Throughout our discussion, I could witness how his entrepreneurial mindset was relentlessly navigating the opportunity space which was unfolding before his eyes. While we talked, he was already engaging in this process of checking whether this was feasible, whether that would be sufficiently attractive and how he could make a viable business out of all this. I could witness a skill set that he applied that probably all companies need to develop and train to be successful within and after the current crisis. And it is about these skills which I want to talk to you today in our first podcast. Now this podcast series will be dedicated to finding opportunities in uncertainty. We will be sharing stories on how businesses navigate these uncertain times, sharing good experience, but also what challenges these businesses face, what solutions they try out. In this podcast series, we will also be open to keep cases anonymous to ensure that we can talk openly about the do's and don'ts without the filtering of corporate communication departments. We will talk with business owners which prefer not to disclose their names because small and medium-sized businesses today also face very difficult choices. Such businesses will be in situations where they need to decide if they will have to shift the focus of their business, let go of part of their employees or put them in a long state subsidized part-time employment. I'm sure many of you will aim to put your business in a kind of hibernation state where you can survive on a low energy level for a long time. In these situations you will have to ask to what kind of business world you will wake up again. Will it be the business environment which you knew or a dramatically changed one in which your current set of capabilities and employees are no longer sufficient to succeed? We want to be first and foremost a forum for inspiration and how to find and develop opportunities. Learn from others and jointly be more prepared to navigate in the fog in which most of us are today. But now back to the story of the business owner. As confinement for him means that he has essentially no right anymore to operate his restaurant as he is used to, his first conclusion was that he will have to close his business. As we however worked through the options he really had on the table, it became clear that the main question is how long this confinement will last. If the confinement is short, he would certainly be able to go into hibernation, wait for the crisis to end and eventually pick up his business and run it as he has run it for many years. 
If the confinement, however, would be long, the environment in which he will have to operate would have probably changed. His old regular customers would have also changed their behavior. They would have grown more used to ordering their food or cooking the food themselves or buying pre-cooked meals. All this would result in his business being much less attractive when he comes out of hibernation. And coming out of hibernation would also mean that he would lack the financial buffer which he has today. So while mapping out his option, closing completely, closing only the restaurant but keeping the kitchen open and with that responding to a potential growing takeaway market, I realized that out of instinct he was already going back to his customer, thinking how they would most likely start to adapt their way of life in response to the confinement. And I understood that his instinct navigates him to a first important technique. When a crisis is sufficiently systemic, then it is not only your company which will be driven to change, but also your customer. So all business planning should be anchored in the anticipation of the new and future customer, not in the needs of your current customers. He then started to wonder how he would still reach his customers. Who would be doing the delivery? Does it take new skills? Can he use his current staff? And it was then that I realized that he was now starting to anticipate the response of his stakeholders. What would they think? How would he motivate them to follow his offerings? always focusing on his primary stakeholders, his employees. While we were still talking, he already got out his phone and called his cook and his waitresses to hear their opinion. He followed the instinct to directly validate his hypotheses. Validate things now rather than later. And while I was leaving, I could still hear him on the phone discussing with his stakeholders and probably calling also his first regular customers to see whether they would be willing to be the, his first takeaway customers. It was for me very inspiring to see how with a few new thoughts he directly jumped into checking the desirability of his offering, the feasibility for checking with his stakeholders. And later he would still need to make the, the numbers and to check the financial viability, but what inspired me maybe most was that he didn't want to let the old way of running his business limit his choices today. He refused to lose spirit in this crisis and he relentlessly was looking ahead. So what I learned is if your business is disrupted, don't fight it. Go back to the basis and start anticipating the future customer needs. Be open to your employees, be transparent to your stakeholders and let yourself be driven by your entrepreneurial spirit. In uncertain environments, you need to think in scenarios and opportunities, number crunching and analyzing problems and finding optimal solutions. That can wait for later. So I hope you have enjoyed this first little episode of our podcast series on finding opportunities in crisis. In the next podcast, we will talk about the importance of getting out of the binary world of before the crisis and after the crisis. Why this matters, we can better anticipate if we put ourselves into the shoes of a manager in the airline industry today. If you are such a manager, then you have probably stopped most, if not all, of your operations. In doing so, you are in a good company with most other major airlines. Singapore Airlines, for example, only operates 4% of its fleet today. So your attention is probably focused 100% on making sure that you can survive as long as necessary and on keeping your business able to pick up operations again when the crisis is over. 
In addition, you most likely try to anticipate how long this crisis would last. Will it be one month, three months, six months, 12 months or even 18 months? In the next podcast, we will explain the importance of not being stuck in this binary world of normal operations like before the crisis and no operations like in the crisis. And the reason for that is very simple. The crisis will most likely lead to systemic change on the consumer side, which will be longer lasting than the confinement in any given market. We need to prepare for a deep sense of insecurity on the customer side. The times where we were jumping in a plane to visit another city over the weekend might be quite far away. At the same time, no operations is also something which is not sustainable for an airline company. I'm thinking here very much about my own students which come from around the world and which right now cannot even get home to their families. I'm thinking about all the maintenance which needs to take place in remote locations by engineers which happen to be on a different continent. We also need to prepare for a long period of alternating COVID-19 hotspots around the world. And all this combined means that normal operations in the entire network of an airline company is a prospect which might be quite far into the future. However, it will be important to get some of this air traffic up and running again, stabilize it, maybe with the help of novel technology for infection protection. And in consequence, for the airline industry, it is now not the time to hibernate, but to innovate finding new ways how to create a stable and more robust offering. And what is true for the airline industry is also true for many other industries. And we will discuss how to get out of the binary planning of before and after the crisis and into a strategizing mode that uncovers new opportunities. For now, many thanks for joining us today and wishing you all a very positive spirit when looking into the future.